Hey y'all. So I am going to start doing more videos for you guys. Um, I got my studying done earlier today, but I just finally had a moment to come on here and do a video. And today's scripture, well, books actually and chapters are Psalms 22, Exodus 15, and Isaiah 64. I'm not going to say too much about them, but I am going to give you guys the things that stood out for me to help you guys get a better interpretation. So on Psalms 22, they were talking about prayer. And this was David praying at this point, and it's talking about how great suffering can um, turn into great joy. And that was like the theme of this, and it was despite our, our well, what I took from it, despite your current situation or whatever rejection you're going through or whatever, you know, there's, some, there's more that's going to come from that. And then they actually tied it together with scripture from another book in John. And I'm going to give you guys specifically what I'm talking about. So it said here in Psalms, it said, My strength has dried up like sun-baked clay. My tongue stuck to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. And they were um, making the connection between this being um, the same thing that Jesus went through. So if you go forward to John, the chapters, it's 19 and 28. It says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished to fulfill the scripture. He said, I am thirsty. So they're saying how the two of them coincide with each other. And there's a couple of other, other different other um, sort of examples that they were given. So they're basically saying how on the 15th chapter of this one, he was saying his mouth was dry and he needed something to drink. And, they, and then when John, the same thing that happened to Jesus. And Jesus is actually a descendant of David. So if this is like the what happened before it happened. If that makes sense to you guys. So that's how I was able to piece the two together. And it actually gave me this in my study Bible. I have an NLT life application study Bible. So for me, it just showed how, you know, you may be in a, a certain situation where you're going through something. And, you know, you're praying to God. And you're like, God, please save me. You know, I need to come out of this situation. You know, I feel like you've abandoned me. You know, what's going on, God? You know, when you're in deep despair and you're pouring your heart out to God. And you're like, God, where are you? This was These are two situations that look like that. But even in the end of those situations, God still saved them and still redeemed their life and redeemed their story. And he'll do the same thing for us. So then we move on to Exodus 15. And this is after God delivered them out of out of Egypt. You know, he swallowed the um, the Pharaoh and his army behind them. After he opened the sea, he closed it back on top of them. They drowned, you know. That was the end of them. And now they're singing a song of deliverance. You know, they're happy, they're singing, they're rejoicing. But then, you know, how many times have we been singing and happy and rejoicing in a situation because we finally got the victory, but then here comes trouble again. And then we automatically go pointing the fingers at somebody or pointing the fingers at God and we're like, you know, this is somebody, what are we supposed to do, blah, blah, blah. So what ended up happening was, is they got upset with Moses and they, um, they based because they got to a place where they were walking through a desert for like three days. Let me make sure that's right. I believe it was three days. And then they started complaining to Moses about, what are we going to drink? There's no water. And then they came across this patch of water that was bitter. And, you know, he uh, Moses was like trying to figure out what to do. So they turned on him. And what did Moses do? Moses turned to God and he said, God, you know, we need we need help. And God showed him this um, piece of wood and he threw the log into the water. And the water became clean for them. So... This gave me two ideas. You know, how many times do we blame pastors and leaders for something that only God can do? You know what I'm saying? We put our hope and our trust in pastors so much and the people that are leading us that we don't know how to depend on God for ourselves. So here's a clear example of, you know, the leader not coming back at his, his flock and, you know, being nasty or whatever because they feel like he failed them, but he found a solution. Leaders are solutions finders. So they wouldn't have, he wouldn't have found a solution and God delivered, God gave him the solution and he delivered it to the people. So this is a common um, situation with, that we have even today. People are always looking for their fresh water, their, their new spring, their new... Um, refreshment from the day from some other leader when that should be going and getting it from God themselves and that's what I got from that one and I can go on and on and on about how you know we want to turn our back on God or turn our back on some on our leaders or whoever because something's going wrong in our life when all we need to do is just turn to God and let God give us what it is whatever it is that we needed 
and then we'll move on to Isaiah 64 and Isaiah 64 the part that stuck out to me was we are constant sinners how can people like us be saved we are and we are all infected and impure with sin when we display our righteous deeds they are nothing but filthy rags so this just reminded me, and it's a humbling scripture because it just lets you know, no matter how many times you go to church, no matter how many times, you know, you pay your offering or you do this good deed, this action or whatever, you know, you're still a sinner. I'm still a sinner. Everybody's still a sinner. Your pastors are still sinners. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll never amount up to who Jesus was, you know, and that's why we need Jesus to be our savior and to be our example so that way we can get it right every day. So thank God for new mercies every day. But, you know, there's no deed on this earth that you can just fulfill in the natural realm and, you know, you're going to be accepted. So that one's a reminder for me, you know, you Jennifer Mason, you're still a sinner. No matter what you do, you're still a sinner. You know what I'm saying? And not in a bad way, but it's just a reminder. You're not better than anybody else, and you don't have to earn God's love. I don't have to do all of this stuff to get his love. When I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart, I got it. You know? So, and there might have been another one. Oh, and then the other one says, For since world began, no ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you whose work for those who wait on him. for the, the, the. Let me read this again. <laughs> for since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. There's no other God but our God. We're not going to see another God like our God, the one that created the universe. Okay? And his works work for those who wait on him. So, God works for those who wait on him. So if there's something that you're going through or something that you've been praying about or something that God's promised you and you, you know, you haven't gotten it yet, just keep on waiting for him. You know what I'm saying? And even when things, even when you get your blessings, remember that you still have to go back to God and get a fresh uh, spring of water, fresh spring of his word in order to keep going. Don't look to your leaders for all of the information because guess what? Leaders fail sometime too. And if you are a leader and, and people are looking to you, remember you continue looking to God for the answers. And that's all that I really have for you guys. I didn't really go into like the deep, deep breakdowns because I just want to keep things surface level for the group and just give you guys a basic understanding of what we're reading. And I hope that that helps you guys. If it did, show me some love in the comment area. If you if you have questions still, feel free to ask me. I will I will answer them as best as I can or rely on Holy Spirit to give me the answer. So thank you guys for participating in the challenge. I hope that this reading is helping you grow, helping you stretch, and really understand God and what happened back then and how we can apply these teachings and principles and stories to our life now.